welcome to Riley's Roost People tell me they have quite a hoot And there's just no way of knowing who to stop on by And say hi Well every morning when the sun comes up You'll find me with my coffee cup Heading out back, guitar all tuned up I got another idea to be made up in a song In the shack in the back <laughs> Welcome to Riley's Roost, the shack in the back here in Nashville, Tennessee. Lori Carter Bennett. I'm here. Good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our mutual friend, Bob Absolutely. Irwin, Absolutely. And Brittany for introducing us and stuff. But thanks so much for coming I and joining it. us. I love it. I've had a big shack. time. <laughs> I love your shack. Oh, thank you. Love so, your shack. Lori, you are a descendant of the original, the one and only, the Carter family. I sure am. Right? And my so third many generation. Third generation. So mm -hmm. tell me what it was like growing up as Anita's daughter. Growing up was, uh, it was great. We got to go on the road with, uh, they take, you they did. take us a bunch, a, a bunch of us at once. Mm -hmm. But it was once, one thing, there wasn't a lot of room to go in the car because you'd have to, they'd put us, make us a bed in the floorboard of the back of the car. And, and usually it would be, um, usually it was grandma and, and aunt Helen and mama mm -hmm. and one Sometimes two kids right. got to go on the road with them, but um, we we enjoyed doing that. We loved doing that. It was you know big thing for us to get to do, and they'd get us up and let us do a song or two when we were little kids. And so, what age was that? What's the earliest you remember going out on the road with your grandma Mabel uh, and your mom? Probably it was four or five years old. Probably four. Wow. We always were wanting to go with them on the road, and then <laughs> and then we finally most of us. Um, well, a lot of us started, um, my cousin David, who's Helen's son, and uh, and I started working with Grandma and um, Mom and Aunt Helen uh, full-time in 1973 when I was 14, and the Will Circle Be Unbroken album had just recently um, been released and been pretty popular, and she had a new following with younger people, college-age right. Little hippie people, and <laughs> <laughs> we played a lot of uh, festivals and neat, neat things. And they mm -hmm. were so respectful to Grandma; it was just unbelievable. There was one in particular we pay, we played. I'll never forget it. It was strange. They had this, um, they had this uh, stage, and then way down in the middle of of a, you had to walk down a hill through people. Mm -hmm. Only way to get there. And poor Grandma's got her outer harp strapped on, trying to get down through there. Every one of them stood up because she had to walk through the crowd. Every one of them stood up, helped her, took her hand, helped each and every one of them helped her all the way down to the stage. Wow. So that particular festival, the, the, the crowd sounds like it parted like the... They did. And it was really neat watching that. And I didn't really realize that that made me realize that grandma was really somebody a you know it was, just, it was it was a big deal and you know because there were there were people that weren't necessarily they were older than me mm -hmm. but um there were young young people you know right. there and then it was really it was something else to see and they were so respectful to her yeah growing up did you play much at home was music a thing at home or was that a road thing and you did other stuff at home what was your traditions well i never i never played anything except a terrible <laughs> piano i had the worst piano teacher and i don't mind saying that now she was terrible she sang the scale way off key and it just i could i couldn't bear it and i learned nothing so that was the end of my piano right um but, but as a family mom, did as you a sit around and play, not much say? not much i mean no. sometimes aunt helen and mom would get together and come over and they would write mm -hmm. and and they you know do little demos and yeah. they used to have a what it was called a woolen sack mm -hmm. uh, it was a Reel to reel, ah. and, I, and they just—it was a little machine that uh, that they recorded that on. they recorded on. It made a pretty good. That would put the initial yeah. you know, thing down, and before then, until they tape. went to do the demo, right? Yeah. They did the real demo. Mom sang background on a lot of sessions in town, mm -hmm. especially RCA sessions of uh, Porter and Dolly. By the wow. time they did holding on with nothing left to hold on to, I knew my mama's part. By heart, I, oh, I knew it all because I wow. would, I got to go to the a lot of the sessions, and uh, wow. and I'd been to the Porter and, and Norma Jean things and the mm -hmm. Norma Jean who you know who was mm -hmm. preceded Dolly who mm -hmm. we loved and we loved Dolly too she was wonderful and is wonderful, but um, mm -hmm. 
uh, went to a lot of those, and then I got to go sometimes to Uncle John's sessions, but not so often because he always did 10 o'clock sessions. Mm -hmm. And when I was a little kid, it just we just didn't stay up that late, you know, when we were little kids. Right. You were telling me when you first got here that you have memories in this neighborhood. I do. Because you're your grandmother. Right. Owned a home right across the street from us, basically. Actually, Aunt June lived there until um, she and Carl Smith bought it when they married. Okay. Back in the 50s. And she lived there until 1968 when she and Uncle John married. Um, Then Grandma moved there, um, and she stayed there until her death in 1978. So I have... Wow memories from as far back as i can remember of playing uh running the fields getting in the creek uh running these streets up and down you know <laughs> just amazing. bicycles and <laughs> and and maybelle's best friend at the time men snow men and snow. Uh, that was many many snow i'll put it that way she um <laughs> some of our friends my mom was saying Mama just loves men. She loves men so much. She does everything with men. And they're going, huh, men? Men? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're going, men? Mother Maybell? And anyway, they finally got it. They got it straightened out that it was many. You know, right. you know, you know but they bowled together. They mm-hmm. fished together. They played. We had a board game that was a homemade board game called Don't Get Mad. It was basically kind of like aggravation. Okay. But it was a big old board, and it was made on on homemade something. But they played all kinds of cards, and don't get mad. And um, it was just a daily thing. They were together every day, and that was her. They did everything together. She didn't drive, so Grandma drove her wherever she went. Okay. uh, It was, they were just inseparable. Right. Hank was on the road a lot, and men was, you know, whenever Grandma was, here and she was you know they were joining the um, they they were ready to go go fishing go to florida do whatever they wanted to do now so. i wonder if i wonder if your grandmother ever traveled back to hank snow's home of nova scotia do you know i don't if she know. ever went with minnie back there i don't know that they did mm-hmm. i'm not sure about that i mean mm-hmm. i know she worked all up and around there right and you know um my mom hasn't did an album with hank yeah on uh well, and Hank lived right on the corner. Right. Did Hank he, not have his own studio in his home, too? He Is did. That right? He did. Uh-huh. Yeah. But they didn't do this. They, Mom was 18 when she recorded with him. Wow. Um, but, uh, and she had some pretty good, they had some pretty big records out of it. It was it was a good, great yeah. album, actually. So, Lori. Yes. Thank you for coming to the Riley's Hat- Brewster. Welcome happy to the Happy to be here yeah, in the shack. It's, it's so good to have you. You're going to sing us a song right now called Ring of Fire. Tell me the history behind that, because it was your mom's song, Anita's, first, before... Yes, it was. Um, Merle Kilgore and Aunt June were writing it. Yeah. Mom had was cutting an album. They wrote it originally for her, and the style in which she did it. Mm-hmm. Uncle John heard it, and he had this vision of having these Mexican horns in it, and, right. and but he wanted to give Mom time to see if hers took off, and it didn't, so... He recorded it and much kind of big hit, but mom's Mm -hmm. version has since kind of resurfaced, and Mm -hmm. that's how I learned it when I was a little girl. And um, she recorded it, I think, in 62, maybe 63, but um, that's how she did it. And uh, I do it somewhat like she did it, not quite quite as well as she did it, but it's still her style and, and the way I enjoy doing it. It's but, real um, pretty. It, it is. I like it. I well, like it. That's the way it was originally written. Yeah. Uh, Uncle John changed some some of the um, verse. I mean, courses and things. Verses rather. Yeah. And uh, to suit him. And great. That's. Well, you want to try it? it? I'll try it. Yay. <laughs> Love is a burning thing And it makes a fiery ring Bringing her to the heart's desire I fell into the ring of fire I fell into, into the burning ring of fire I fell down, down Burns, 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 burns The ring of fire The ring of fire
of love is sweet When two fiery hearts meet I believed you like a child Oh, but the fire went wild I fell in Down, down.